one of the most corrupt leaders since 1984 and president of the Democratic Republic of the Congo for 32 years, Mobutu Sisi Seko, or commonly known as the Leopard, led a corrupt government with the sole purpose of benefiting him and his friends. Mobutu first started out in the military after he was caught stowing away on a ship leaving the Congo. He was ordered to serve seven years in the Force Publique, the Congolese colonial army. After serving his mandatory time, he pursued his dream of journalism, writing for the Leopoldville newspaper for two years. During his career, he went to Belgium to cover the 1958 World Exposition, where he met with Patrice Lumumba and joined the National Congolese Movement. Mobutu eventually became Lumumba's personal aide. After independence talks in Brussels, the Congo was granted independence on June 30, 1960. The new independence formed a coalition government, which is when several political parties cooperate, which reduces the majority control of any party within the coalition. It was led by Mobutu's friend, Prime Minister Lumumba, and the new president, Joseph Kasavubu. This new government was quickly engulfed by a mutiny called the Congo Crisis, which was staged by the Congolese army during the... This time, Mobutu was ordered to go and convince soldiers to return to their barracks. He was um, extremely brave. So there was a whole period where he was having to, you know, uh, in the 1960s, when basically the army was mutinying because um, independence had been granted and this Congolese army uh, was fed up with being ruled by uh, white Belgian officers. And he, he physically had to go and persuade all these um, mutinying soldiers to put down their weapons. You have to be pretty brave to do that. Lumumba turned to the Soviet Union for assistance when he thought the United Nations forces were not helping. In the time span of six weeks, Lumumba received large amounts of aid, around a thousand technical advisors. The U.S. government was worried by giving aid to the Congo, the Soviet Union was spreading communist influences in Africa. The U.S. and Belgium advised President Vubu to stage a coup with the goal of removing Lumumba from power. Finding out about this plan, Lumumba was outraged and declared Vubu deposed or removed from office. Lumumba and Vubu both ordered Mobutu to arrest the other. On September 14, 1960, Mobutu The new plan had Lumumba under house arrest, keeping Vubu as president and all of the Soviet support personnel were ordered to leave the Congo, hoping to get support from the U.S. Mobutu accused Lumumba of pro-communist views, which resulted in him later disappeared from public view. 1965 marked another time of turmoil for the Congolese government. President Vubu wanted to appoint Iversti Kimba to oppose the rising power of Moise Tshumba, who represented the Congolese National Convention. Tshumba had won majority support in the March elections. The Congolese parliament refused the appointment of Kimba, which led to Mobutu getting control of the government in a bloodless coup. In November 25th, Il ne s'agit pas d'un coup d'état militaire, mais plutôt d'une simple révolution pacifique. Tout est maintenant entre les mains, n'est-ce pas, du, 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 du général Mobutu. He took control using the regime d'exception, or a state of emergency. His goal, which he promised to maintain for five years, was that there will be no more political party activity in the country. And with that statement, the parliament was reduced to almost nothing, later being abolished altogether. With the government abolished, the province amount in the Congo reduced. Mobutu had c control of a highly centralized state and massive amount of power. The Congolese government started being apolitical or not involved in politics after Mobutu's takeover in 1965. Politicians were associated with being corrupt, and Mobutu was proclaimed the nation's second national hero after Lumumba. Ironically, Mobutu tries to present himself as a successor to Lumumba's legacy, even with his role in removing Lumumba from power. In 1967, the NPR, or the Popular Movement of the Revolution, was created. All Congo citizens became members of the NPR from birth to increase the popularity. To head the party, the NPR elected its president every seven years. Mobutu was nominated as the only candidate for a term as president in practice. This gave Mobutu all the power in the nation. Mobutu was able to gain support and defeat the opposition. He relied heavily on playing musical chairs with members of the Congolese government. He had been very effective at neutralizing the opposition. So he'd either um, terrorized them into fleeing the country, or um, he basically bought them off. Uh, and he was very clever at doing that. So if somebody was criticizing his 
behavior, his spending patterns, his the the way in which he you know he he he, he lived and his family lived. Uh, then basically he would um, give them a very important post to make sure they they got paid off. He rotated members of the government, switching the cabinet members constantly so that no one could do any harm. The best example of this treatment is with John Nizi Kiliban, who was removed as a foreign minister and sentenced to death. Mobutu later changed his sentence to life in prison with a following of torture, but released him after a year and later appointed him to prime minister. Another example of this in 1966, when four cabinet members were arrested on charges of an attempted coup, tried by military court and were publicly executed with a witness of over 50,000 people, Mobutu's reason for the executions was that one had to strike through a spectacular example and create the conditions of regime discipline. When a chief takes a decision, he decides, period. Mobutu later moved from torture and murder and turned to buying off political rivals. In 1970, nearly all potential threats to Mobutu's authority had been smashed, and for the most part, law and order was brought to nearly all of the country. That year marked the pinnacle of Mobutu's power. That year, the NPR was the only party allowed to run in the elections, and 98.3% of voters voted in favor of the NPR list. Mobutu was the only candidate for president. As his power grew, Mobutu started renaming cities of the Congo, stating in mid-1966 that this was to promote pro-African authenticity campaign. He renamed Leopoldville, Kinshasa, and Elizabethville became Lumubashi. Eventually, he renamed the country to the Republic of Zaire. On October 1971, his citizens were ordered to change their European names to African ones to enforce this rule. Priests were threatened with five years in prison if they were caught baptizing a Zairean child with a European name. Although he was unsuccessful in being named president for life, Mobutu was re-elected in 1977 and 84. He spent the majority of that time increasing his personal fortune. He had roughly five billion U.S. dollars, almost as much as the foreign debt at the time. As his bank account balance was rising, the state of the economy was declining. The roads were going into ruins, and many of the people were starving and homeless. Mobutu had a fleet of Mercedes-Benz cars to take him from his many palaces. He frequently used his chartered Air France airplanes for shopping trips in Paris. While all this was going on, workers went months without being paid. popular saying during the time was, the civil servants pretended to work while the state pretended to pay them. Throughout Mobutu's reign, he was portrayed as someone like a god. Over his years, he held titles such as Father of the Nation and Supreme Combatant. Mobutu was able to successfully capitalize on Cold War tensions and gain significant support from Western countries like the United States and international organizations such as International Monetary Fund. As the Cold War ended in 1990, Mobutu had no choice but to lift the ban on political parties. He still kept majority control, but he appointed a transitional government following the riots by many unpaid soldiers. 1996 marked the year Mobutu was overthrown in the First Congo War. His opposition was led by future president Laurent Tizer Kabila. Mobutu's opposition failed when he was away in Switzerland getting cancer treatment. Kabila's forces had almost completely overrun the country by mid-1997. After Mobutu fled into exile, after failed peace negotiations, the Alliance of Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Congo Zaire, led by Kabila, declared victory over Mobutu the following day. Zaire was renamed the Democratic Republic of the Congo as Mobutu fled to Togo. Mobutu died on September 7, 1997 from prostate cancer. He was said to have embezzled roughly $15 billion, including $5 billion from his own country. Uh, um, I think he is seen as one of the big the big leaders in Africa, not in a good way. He's seen as being an example not to be followed.